This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. Please don't stop. I need all the help I can get. I got a great interview for you today with Ben Sanderson from Gun Owners of America. We're going to talk about the current legislation trying to be stuffed through the House of Representatives and then onto the Senate or whatever to ban this mythical thing called an assault weapon which you might think only includes black rifles and stuff like that, but now they're going after your favorite handguns as well. So hang tight. We'll get into the detail of that with Ben here in just a minute. Also, if you wouldn't mind checking out the uh, channel on these other locations, every once in a while, YouTube gets its knickers in a knot or a bug up its rump or something and deletes a video. So if you go to Rumble, for sure the video will be there. I try to also make sure it's posted on these other platforms as well, just given time and space and place. So please do uh, subscribe to at least one of those, if not more. And then lastly, if you would like to join Gun Guy TV crew and support the channel, you can do that at gunguytvcrew.com or by just looking for Gun Guy TV crew on Locals or Patreon. All right, let's go talk to Ben. Ben, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate your time today because obviously we don't know what we're talking about. If we're just watching the videos, we get the kind of, you know, the Hollywood drama that goes on in, in the house and all the stuff that the people want us to see because they want to get reelected. That doesn't tell a squad about what's going on with the legislation. So help us out. What's actually happening and what are they actually trying to ban? Uh, well, Joel, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, and the assault, weapon, the assault weapons ban of 2022, it's very broad encompassing. Uh, the biggest thing it does is it classifies essentially all semi-automatic rifles as semi-automatic assault weapons. I mean, like you said before, or like we've said before, it, assault weapons a made up term. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's more based on the aesthetics and how scary the rifle is. Uh, and uh, so the assault weapons ban this time, it goes off banning uh, based on features. So if it has a detachable magazine and a certain number of characteristics, I have it right here, actually. Uh, so it sounds for, like they took the, uh, the kind of the California ban and the New York ban, and they're following that. Cause that's what's what our California ban out here is. It's a feature based ban. It's not really, if it's ugly and it's scary, they ban it. And if you take all that stuff off, it's not banned anymore. You come up with crazy stock. Is that kind of what they're trying to do? Uh, yeah, actually it's worse than that. Uh, the Thornton oh, wow. stock. Yeah. Uh, you guys have the Thornton stock in California, correct? That's right, yeah. kind of gets you to a featureless rifle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's actually under one of the, sorry, that's actually under one of the definitions for pistol grip. Uh, so no longer are you able to have that. So your AR-15, uh, along with being banned by name, the AR-15, uh, all of the features, all of the grips, anything, essentially, even a threaded barrel gets you a single point and that makes it an assault weapon. Uh, so this covers a broad amount of commonly, commonly owned and commonly used rifles, handguns, shotguns, simply because it has those features and it looks scary. Nothing about its actual capabilities. I want to make sure I understand this. So if you're in a restrictive state and you've already configured it to fit that state's cockamamie feature-based ban, this new law, which would cover the country, is going to make that, that rifle, which is now legal, illegal, even though you've gone to all the expense of making it fit the state's ban. If I got that right? Yep. Uh, so under this legislation, uh, take, for example, you have a Thornton stock that's featureless, everything else except for it has a detachable magazine. And like I said, the Thornton stock, that Thornton stock that counts as a pistol grip, and that would automatically make your rifle, even though it was legal in California before this ban, it's going to make it a semi-automatic assault weapon, uh, which is the term in the legislation. Yeah, I'm well, as you said, assault weapon doesn't mean anything. It's a it's yeah. a uh, it's a political term. It, there actually is no such thing. There's an assault rifle, but the Sturm Gewehr like that, but it's not an assault weapon. There's no such thing. All right. So anyway, I interrupted you. You were about to tell us exactly what this thing bans. Go ahead. I'll sit here and sigh heavily <laughs> as you go through the list. <laughs> what is it going to ban exactly? Go ahead. Uh, well, it bans AR-15s, it bans AK-47s, it bans uh, my personal favorite, the Daewoo K2, which I personally own. Uh, and 
it's insane. On top of that, it would actually ban certain handguns. Uh, there's a provision under Section 36D of what makes a semi-automatic pistol, a semi-automatic assault weapon, and they are, it doesn't have a fixed magazine, so that means a detachable magazine. It doesn't matter the capacity. A threaded barrel, a second pistol grip, a barrel shroud, uh, the ability to accept the magazine in a different place other than the pistol grip, uh, a manufactured weight of over 50 ounces, and a stabilizing bracer component. And it's a semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm. So what this originally, what we, it, in, what we uh, assume was the intent of the people who wrote this bill first was that they wanted to make sure that there was no way a pistol, a pistol brace firearm could make it into uh, and around the assault weapons ban. However, because of what I read last, the semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm that would cover Glocks, that would cover CZ-75s, that would cover even some certain 1911s. Uh, the issue is the Glock 18 exists, and that's a version of the Glock pistols. And it doesn't. the legislation doesn't talk about what chronological order has to go in or what was developed after what. It doesn't specify that. So realistically, any gun grabber that wanted to justify a way to take away your stock Glock 17 or your Gucci'd out Glock 45, they could easily use this legislation specifically to target these common use handguns. Uh, I mean, if we look at the uh, recent mall shooting at Greenwood, the uh, Mr. Dickens, the hero who stopped the shooting in 15 seconds, he used a Glock nine millimeter. That would be banned under this legislation. It's insane to think about. I mean, these are commonly used handguns on top of the commonly used AR-15s and AK-47s. It's insane. You brought up the common use issue, and common use has been something that has been talked about in three Supreme Court decisions, Heller, McDonald, and now Bruin. Um, what chances if, I mean, first of all, I guess let's start at the beginning before we get too ahead of ourselves. What chance do you think this has of actually passing the House? And if it does, what chance do you have, do you think it has in the Senate? So the thing about the House is it's currently passed the rules committee, or sorry, not the rules committee, the judicial markup, and it's going on to the rules committee tomorrow. The, during the rules committee is when they'll discuss and debate what's allowed, what's not allowed during the debate, et cetera. It's a lot of the boring Congress behind the scenes part. Uh, but then after that, after Wednesday's uh, meeting, it will likely go to the floor as soon as Thursday. Uh, the likelihood of it getting past the House well, obviously, the, the anti-gunners control the House currently, so it could pass almost immediately. However, we have been hearing stuff about it not – there being some people on both the left and the right that are unsure about whether they want to vote for it or whether they want to vote against it. And that's good news. However, I would encourage everyone to keep calling your representatives and making sure they don't vote or they vote no on this legislation uh, because it's dangerous. Even if it passes with a few yes votes uh, over the limit, it could go to the Senate. And in the Senate, we just had uh, the 15 Republicans that went over and compromised on our rights in Corner and Murphy. It's insane. And we're worried about that happening again. And so that's why we're putting on a lot of pressure and making sure that everyone calls their representatives, everyone calls their senators and urges them to vote no on this legislation because it's terrible. And even if, even if they vote no and it doesn't pass, it's still something, there's still a record of it, and it will be used to justify it in the future. The problem, it seems to me, is that if they pass these things, and obviously uh, Slow Joe is going to sign it, then now we're stuck in the courts for years to get it thrown out. Or am I in somehow misreading where we are with this thing? <laughs> it seems to me that even though they, they're just defying the court openly, but they know they can do it. And then we're stuck with having to comply or live under these draconian anti-constitutional laws until we can get the court to throw them out. What are your thoughts? Well, you're completely right. These are unconstitutional. Uh, even during the hearing, I'm sure you've seen the clips of uh, Chairman Nadler saying, oh, the issue is that these uh, firearms are common use. The issue is that they're on the streets and that millions of Americans own them. And that goes immediately against a lot of these court decisions in saying that common use firearms are constitutionally protected. Uh, but again, agreeing with you, 
they're flying in the face of this because they know the courts take a while. Uh, it, courts, the court cases we have, they're also super important. Obviously, New York State and Pistol Rifle Association versus Bruin was huge. However, it, it's not an immediate fix. Uh, so that's why really what we're trying to do is being proactive and shutting down this law before it even gets to that stage. So, Ben, I'm going to I'm going to make a I'm going to make a speech here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not going to make a speech. OK, um, but I do want to share something because, you know, you and I are a little different in age. Uh, actually, you and I are a lot different in age. Would you swap me with me straight across? I'd love to be younger than I am. That's not going to work. <laughs> All right. As look, I'm an old man. I'm in my 60s, my mid 60s. And I remember this. I think this is important to to know because a lot of folks weren't around. And they don't remember this stuff. I remember when I was in high school here in California. The um, the shooting team for the ROTC had 22 rifles they kept at school. Sometimes they took them home. The individual students took them home and those were actually stored at the school. When I was in high school and uh, and, and when I was in grade school in particular, because I went to a small school um, that was a more of a rural school, it was not uncommon for the teachers to show up when, uh, right after opening season, you know, for dove or something, they'd shoot and then they'd come to work and park in the parking lot and their shotgun or whatever's hanging in the window of their truck or sitting in the back seat of their car. And you can imagine that happening today. You know, the SWAT team would show up and they'd arrest everybody within a hundred mile radius just because. But this is the way that it used to be in California when I was growing up. And people will say, okay, boomer, I get it. But the truth is California used to be a very reliably conservative state or what you might call now a red state. And it went the other way because people moved here from New York and other areas and they brought their politics with them. We used to have uh, television and radio ads in San Diego County, where I live, that said, thank you for visiting San Diego. Now, please go home. I mean, it literally said that don't move here because we didn't want people to come here and ruin the way the state was. And unfortunately they did. And of course, you know, other people from other states, I'm a, I'm both a California resident and an Arizona resident because my wife and I have a small ranch up in the white mountains of Arizona. And I can tell you that Arizona residents say the same thing now because people from California, New York or whatever, moving to Phoenix and Maricopa County is the most uh, anti-gun liberal of the bunch of all the counties in Arizona because of that. But the converse is also true that things change in the in the right direction. And so if you're watching this, I, I hope you will listen to Ben's words and be encouraged by that because I remember when concealed carry was a rarity in the United States, it was very difficult to get a permit. Um, everything was either may issue or, <laughs> or no issue. And yet here we are now 43 States, I think of the 50 are shall issue and 26 of those more than half are constitutional carry States. Arizona being one of them, that would have been unheard of 25 years ago. So we're heading in the right direction. I think it's very difficult if you happen to be behind enemy lines in New York or New Jersey or California or something to see that. So I wanted to say that because a lot of folks from restrictive states uh, watch this show. It's important to know that the fight is worth fighting and that we are actually, believe it or not, in the face of all this, we're winning. And I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, Ben. What I see when I watch those videos of those hearings and what I see these anti-gunners doing, I see the death throes of gun control. I see the animal wounded and flailing about trying to survive. And I don't think it's going to and that's why they're going over the top. That's my that's my feeling about it. So I'm watching it going, yeah, we're winning. But that's not the that's not the attitude that a lot of people have. So what do you think are first of all, what actions can someone take directly to see if they can get their representative to vote against this thing? And where can they get information that they need in order to do that? Uh, so if you look at gunownersofamerica.org. We have a legislator lookup that if you put in your zip code, will give the information of your state representative uh, and as well as your senator and allow you to call them. There's a there's a con congressional switchboard where you can type in the number and they'll transfer you to your state's representatives and senators uh, and call them directly. Or uh, we have email addresses as well, I believe, through our site and really it's about making your voice heard. Uh, even those behind enemy lines, like you like to say, uh, it's important that they hear it, even if you know that they're going to vote anti-gun. It's 
enough pressure will eventually get them to switch or even reconsider their vote. If they don't hear anything, they are going to assume that everyone's okay with it. But if you put up enough of a fight, if you put up enough of a voice to let them know that you're upset with this and that you're not going to vote them in or that you're not going to support them ever again, it's very important. A hundred percent. Appreciate ben, what it. else is going on other than this god awful, horrible effort in the House to, to take our rights away? What else is happening nationally that we need to know about? Uh, well, in, in addition to the assault weapons ban of 2022, there's also a Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act repeal coming. Uh, if you're not familiar with the PLCAA, it essentially protects uh, the gun industry from frivolous lawsuits, which have no it, which have no basis or grounds being filed against them. Uh, it's like saying that you can't sue uh, Toyota if a drunk driver hits you or your family. You, you don't sue the car manufacturer, then you sue the person that hit you, and, and that's what this repeal would allow. It would allow for people uh, who are shot by criminals or shot by evil people to sue the gun manufacturer, and we've seen it been tried. And even in California, I believe you just pat the governor Newsom just signed into law, a bill that allows uh, citizens to sue uh, members of the gun industry over there, which is insane. Doesn't make yeah, any he sense. Did. Yeah, he yeah. did. Around here, we call him gruesome nuisance or Gavin <laughs> nuisance or other things that cannot be said on a family friendly show, unfortunately. But yeah, he just did. I don't think that will withstand. Um, a court challenge. But again, we get back to the court challenges are nice, but they're after the fact that you get to show up and try to keep it from, from, uh, from hurting you after it's become law. The much better approach is to keep it from becoming law in the first place. Now I want you to do me if one favor, and that is go through those handguns one more time that this bill bans. And the reason why I say that is because some people I've heard them say it, ah, I don't care. I don't use an AR-15 anyway. I just want a handgun for home defense. <laughs> they're coming after you baby okay so i'll give it to us one more time give us the list of handguns this thing ben, uh, bans, please. Yeah, perfect i've got it right here uh so like i said for the glock line it would cover almost every single glock i couldn't imagine one that wouldn't be covered because of the glock 18 being an automatic firearm and therefore an automatic version of the the glock series uh, on top of that the cz 75 i know that's really popular with competition shooters uh there's a automatic cz 75 that was made and that would cover all of them uh, on top of that there's the beretta 90 series uh, the beretta 93r uh, is an automatic beretta so therefore could be considered an automatic version uh, the 1911 uh, the we called it the most stopping power uh, over here but that would also be covered under this ban because there were exper experimental versions of the 1911 that were fully automatic. I mean, there's plenty of others. Uh, essentially, uh, one of our gun experts here was talking about how during the turn of the century, a lot of the pistols and the handheld uh, guns at the time were made to be automatic because that's what they thought would be effective. Uh, so I believe it's the Mauser broom handle. There's an automatic version of that. Uh, that would cover all the Mauser's in. I know it's not a common handgun the first one to have, but still uh, you can imagine. And this is just a small list. There's plenty more. I'm sure uh, people in your comments will write in and talk about how, Oh, oh this sure. automatic handgun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be corrected on this. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you think about the, the Glock 17, I think is the most popular, most purchased handgun in the country. Uh, you know, do you, so I'm looking at you as you're watching the video. I'm looking at you through the screen. Yes, you. I'm looking at you. <laughs> no, I'm not. Do you have a Glock 17? Yeah, that's going to be banned. Do you have a 1911? That's going to be banned. Do you have a Beretta, like the Beretta 92 FS or M9 or whatever? That's probably going to be, this is ridiculous. And so the handgun you, you may have bought, or maybe I bought or Ben bought, that you have that the Supreme Court has says you have a right to not only keep, but bear. We just found out in, in uh, Bruin, confirmed in Bruin, that the right to keep a firearm for self-defense and have a fire for self-defense does not end at your doorstep or your porch or the edge of your property, but continues into the public place. But now the gun you bought for that, the handgun that's supposed to be protected by the Second Amendment, wouldn't be until we went back to court and have the Supreme Court do it again. How many years will that take? So, yeah, this is super, super, super important. Please do. I'll put the link in the description. Go to GOA. Follow their alerts. If you haven't signed up for their alerts, you need to. 
um, and then contact your house member, whether you like them or not, whether you think they'll do anything or not, bug the snot out of them, send them an email, call them. You know what? I, if I can, I'll come up with the house switchboard number. Uh, it would be very nice to just shut down their switchboard because I get so many phone calls. I can't answer them anymore. That would be pretty cool. What else can we do, Ben, besides that? And send you money, which would be really cool. <laughs> don't, and really if you're cool. watching this, don't send me money. I have a job. Send them money. <laughs> you want to join Gun Guy TV crew and help out, that's fine. But don't send me money. Send them money. They're actually putting it to work for your rights. What else can we do? Uh, like I said, it's beyond emailing, calling, and just talking about this with your friends, your family. It really comes down to teaching more and more people about the Second Amendment, what it's for, teaching more and more people about guns in general, and it, that it's not something to be scary. Uh, the reason that the uh, anti-gunners get away with this is because they flash it all over the media, that the AR-15 is some super scary, super deadly, super fast firearm, when in reality, it's not. I mean, people, like uh, I know President Biden keeps talking about deer with Kevlar and how you don't use an AR-15 to hunt a deer with Kevlar because... Uh, the you know they're not wearing it but you know a regular deer rifle 30 out six round is going to go straight through that kevlar as well and that's one of the most popular uh hunting rounds in america uh, so it's really calling these people out on that and really sharing it with your community and even your friends even someone who doesn't like guns is bringing to the range once informing them about what guns are and what they can do and showing them a good time it really comes down to like you said uh your rotc shooting team they use 22 rifles, something like that. Something doesn't have to be an AR-15 immediately. It doesn't have to be a Glock 17. It's just something to get them into the idea of, oh, this is fun. Oh, this is what I'd use to defend myself if I was in danger. Well, and it normalizes gun ownership and it normalizes gun shooting and the shooting sports in most of the country. And this is, I think, what people from that live in these major metropolitan areas in these very uh, restrictive states don't realize. When I'm in California in San Diego County, now the city I live in is run by a very conservative mayor. It's a very conservative police department and very pro-gun. The guy used to own a gun shop. Um, but when I'm in Arizona, everybody's got a gun. When the cop pulls you over because you're speeding, he asks you for your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance, and do you have a gun in the car? And if you say no, he looks at you like you got 10 heads or something wrong with you because everybody has a gun in the car. And then he realizes you have California plates and goes, oh, I get it. We're in California. It's not normalized. It's a, that's a cultural issue. And the only way that culture is going to change is if we reinvigorate the gun culture in these very restrictive states. And the only way we do that is by getting people to the range. Okay, so you guys have been fighting what last one you've been fighting the bump stock thing for a long time. And the only reason I ask about the bump stop stock thing is because Cicilline or whatever his name is, a guy in Congress who wrote this thing, he's got the picture of an arm brace and he's talking about how it functions like a bump stock. And one of the other House members looked at him and went, you know, you might want to look that up because it doesn't do that. And the Internet's about to educate you and you're going to feel like an idiot. And the Internet has educated him. I still think he doesn't feel like an idiot, but obviously an arm brace is not a bump stock. An arm brace was created so that people who were injured, who couldn't use both arms to shoot an AR-15, would still have the ability to, to shoot an, a shorter version of an AR-15 pistol and enjoy shooting at the range by having it brace and tied to their forearm. I've shot them. That's what that's for. It's not a bump stock. But that does bring the bump stock into view, um, which ATF went out of their way to ban and had no power to do so. Where are we with that? Uh, so that's currently being heard right now. It's not, unfortunately, it's not in the Supreme Court uh, yet. Uh, on top of that, we have other lawsuits. Uh, we are suing in New York uh, over the pistol, the new uh, handgun concealed carry permit scheme. Uh, additionally, uh, us in the Federal Affairs Department, uh, it's more our district, or sorry, our jurisdiction, the uh, frame and receiver uh, lawsuit has dropped. Uh, if you haven't heard about that, check out our YouTube channel. We've got a video detailing that. Uh, and really, it's coming down to these lawsuits, and we're pushing out as many as we can. Uh, but we also want to choose the right lawsuits and the right case to make sure that we have 100% a good precedent forward. And it's not going to set a bad precedent. It's not going to result in more cases down the line. It's not going to result in more people getting caught up in these unconstitutional bans. 
You just brought up something that uh, we probably ought to close on because it's super important. And that is, uh, and Chuck, Michelle, and I have talked about this a lot from, uh, from CRPA and, and uh, Michelle and Associates. It is extremely common for, well, how do I say this without, uh, without uh, denigrating someone? I don't wish to do that. There are organizations out there that file lawsuits for the purpose of fundraising. And oftentimes, the, when they're fundraising off the current lawsuit, it's to pay for the previous lawsuit that they lost because they're just fundraising. They're, trying, they're using it for fundraising. So sometimes fast is not good. And uh, there are times when people will just jump out there and file a lawsuit for the purpose of fundraising. And that's why they're the first one to file. It's, it, it, these things are very complex. And to Ben's point, it's, there's, a, there are, there's a strategy. And there are, it, without following a strategy, you've just made a lot of noise. And it can cause more problems than it can solve. Then there are organizations that file lawsuits that make sense. Gun Owners of America being one of them. Um, and they do that because they're trying to do it in a strategic fashion. You hear a lot about Sun Tzu and the art of war. I was a martial arts instructor for a long time, security contractor and like that. So I really do like that book. And one of the things that Sun Tzu said is that strategy without tactics uh, is, is the longest path to victory, but tactics without strategy is just a noise before defeat. So if all you do is have the tactic of filing a lawsuit as fast as possible, you just make a noise. Why is this important for you and me to know? Put your money where the lawsuits are going to be filed in a strategic fashion and in an effective fashion to achieve victory, not in a tactical faction fashion to just make noise for fundraising. There are a couple of organizations where you can do that with. This is one of them. I would say in California, California Rifle and Pistol Association is another one. And I'm not going to talk about where you shouldn't put your money, but I've just given you two places where you should. Lawsuits need to be done in a specific way in order for us to win. So at this point, this is the time now, because there's been a hard reset on, on Second Amendment jurisprudence. This is the time now we need to put the money where it, where it has meaning and not where it doesn't. So there you go. Another shameless plug. You can buy me lunch when I see you next. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and that's it. All right. Anything else we didn't talk about that we should talk about? I just want to say for all your California listeners out there, uh, we also do have a state level organization in California, uh, Gun Owners of California. It's run by Surely Mr. not. <laughs> Sam Paredes? <laughs> You, yeah, you want yeah. to tell people to, to support Sam and Lori Paredes? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Absolutely. I love Sam. We're very close friends. Sam and Lori work really, really, really hard. And you're right. Go ahead. I interrupted you. I apologize. No, no, this is great. Uh, obviously, if you know them, then I, I'm assuming your audience knows them. Uh, they no, do. Sam's uh, on my show quite often. Oh. Um, and so people in California, if they watch my show, they know Sam. And uh, Sam is known and loved and appreciated and respected around this place in California as a uh, as a as a, a fighting Mexican. I was going to say a fighting Irishman, but that's more um, Rick Travis, probably from CRPA. <laughs> but he's a fighting Mexican. He is. That's that's a, that's what Sam is. He fights very hard. So you're right. Please support gun owners of California as well. And now, you know, that gun owners of California is actually associated with gun owners of America. They're pretty much one in the same. Now you have your own, you have a separate, um, you've kind of done the same thing in Florida at this point, haven't you? Where you've got an individual working on Florida. Uh, so yeah, we have state directors all over the country. I'd encourage you to look up your map and, or sorry, look at our website and see who your local representatives are. Uh, if we don't have one for your specific state, we also have those for the regions. Uh, obviously it's something super quick and super easy to find. Uh, they're really great people. I've met all of them. Uh, we talk all the time. We help each other out with questions. Uh, they're really, oh, they're all fit our brand of the no compromise. They are all true diehard Second Amendment advocates from the ground up. And that's really important is not only paying attention to us in the federal affairs because we're national, but also on the local level and also on the state level where it, it honestly has a lot more impact for you individually. Uh, it's whether it's your sheriff, uh, not allowing certain people to get uh, concealed carry permits, or if there's a new bill that would require a certain city within a certain city that you can't carry a firearm, or you have to lock up your firearms a certain way. Uh, those are also important because those impact you on a, on a different level. Uh, but nationally, like I said, uh, Gun Owners of America uh, in the Federal Affairs Department is who you should pay attention to. <laughs> ben, thank you very much for coming on the show. You've been a joy. I really appreciate you. I hope you'll come back again. 
course. Then I'll thank you, uh, Joel. This has been an awesome experience. <laughs> My pleasure. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you very much for watching the interview all the way through. Like I always say, I know these things can be long, but the information is super important, particularly now. I do urge you to support gun owners of America. And if you're in California, certainly support gun owners of California. And if you have a, a local director or affiliate of gun owners of America in your state, support them there as well. Great organization. I've been a life member for a long time and uh, they actually do the work. I think that's the important thing. There's a lot of organizations out there I hate to say it, but a lot of them don't do anything that's really worth much. Um, but Gun Owners of America absolutely does. They do the work. I'll put a link in the description for you so you can check out their website. I do also urge you to sign up for their alerts. And please do, please, please, please get involved and contact your legislator, particularly right now in the House of Representatives, so we can hopefully keep these things from becoming law. And um, then if it goes to the Senate, you'll know about it if you subscribe to the alerts. Also, uh, please do, again, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to one of these alternative video platforms because sometimes YouTube gets her uh, knickers up <laughs> in a twist here and they, they delete a video once in a while. And if you get a chance and you'd like to, you can join gun guy TV crew. If you want to support the channel, help me keep this thing going. And that's where you'll find content. You can't get anywhere else exclusive to members. I post pretty much every day. Have a great week. Thank you very much for everything you do. Keep on doing it and wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe. <laughs>